This problem says a diffraction, I'm sorry, a diffraction grating is used in the first order to separate the wavelengths in the Balmer series of atomic hydrogen. And then the previous chapter discusses diffraction gratings. The grating and an observation screen are separated by a distance of 81.0 centimeters. You may assume that theta is small, so sine theta is approximately theta when radian measure is used for theta. I will show that later that that is correct for this problem. How many lines per centimeter should the grating have so that the longest and the next to the longest wavelengths in the series will be separated by 3.00 centimeter? Okay, so here's the Bama series course this one here and that's when the electron jumps down to the second level I know here it shows the first level but for the Bama series it goes down to the second level and this diagram by the way all of these diagrams are from our textbook but this diagram here shows how the interference works so that if this delta L here in length difference equals one full wavelength then in the first order we get a maximum so constructive interference and if the delta L equals twice the wavelength then we get also constructive interference in the order two but they're just looking at order one which means the delta L here is going to be one wavelength and we're going to get to that in a few moments when we're going to look at the calculations I do this particular experiment in the lab where we're determining that and this one is my lab sheet here we have a diffraction grating here is the light source which would be the hydrogen lamp and then here is a ruler and here's a ruler and obviously there's an eye so we're gonna look through here and then we're gonna see that we have for example here the purple and then blue and red line and the same thing over here purple blue and red and then we would get the second order but we're, we're just supposed to look at the first order. I also want to show this image here because we can see that if we're looking here at for example the purple line then we would have an angle theta here that would be tangent of theta would be R over L keep that in mind so again if we're looking at a line over here it would be R over L divide, I'm sorry, not divide, R over L equals tangent theta. What we're supposed to measure here would be in this particular lab would be for hydrogen 656 nanometers, 486 nanometers for turquoise line, 434 nanometers for the hydrogen line. Maybe in the previous recording I forgot about the 434 and just mentioned it before in a 12 I don't remember I don't recall it correctly but any case here these are also my pictures this one is actually taken with the same kind of setup that you saw a moment ago except I put a camera right where the, the um, right behind the diffraction grating where my eye was in the drawing and I photographed here the red line of the hydrogen at 656 the per turquoise one here at 486 and then this one here at 432 and this one here at 410 which is actually invisible or so close to the ultraviolet that it's practically invisible to the human eye but apparently the camera was able to pick it up all right so let's calculate it's gonna look really similar to this one here as we calculate or at least part of the calculation okay so I'm gonna calculate the longest and the shortest wavelength with this one here 1 over lambda equals r times 1 over nf squared minus 1 over ni squared and then this one here if I want to have the lambda in nanometers I would have to shift the decimal point nine times on the red back constant usually it's given in per meters and here if I write 0.0917 then I would have shifted the decimal point nine times from the 10 to the 7 meters to 10 to the negative 2 nan per nanometers uh, or I write it as a decimal for the Bama um, series which is the one in the visible 
the n of course is 2 and then the nf is 2 and then the problem it says how many lines should the grading have set the longest and the next the longest wavelength in the series will be separated and so the longest would be created if I subtract here the smallest number the smallest possible number which would be the 3 because when I subtract these fractions here they're relatively close to each other so it's the overall one here is going to be a small number which means with the wavelength being inverted that would come up with the longest possible wavelength so 3 and the next adjacent one there would be 4 and when we plug in these numbers I'm going to use the graphing calculator but I don't think it should be a surprise let's see actually I might still have that in here from the yeah there it is from the previous calculation so there's the 2 for the bottom line I'm gonna plug in 1 over 3 squared and I invert that and yeah it's no surprise that's a 656 nanometer for the red line and then I'm gonna do the next one and again that should be also no surprise as you look in the book that that will come out to 486 and there it is so the two lines that we need lambda 1 oh, I'm gonna do something hold on there it's gonna be red so lambda 1 equals 656 let's see how many significant figures we should have three because at some point are separated by a distance of 81.0 centimeters and then um, again another separation of 3.000 centimeters so three 656 nanometers and then I'm going to use that turquoise line and I don't know if I have turquoise I'm going to try it let's see yeah there that's not too bad so lambda 2 equals 486 nanometers okay now I'm gonna look at the geometry I mentioned earlier that in my setup I would have to have tangent theta equals R over L and then down here I'm gonna go back to that previous chapter where it says that in order to figure out what the angle is the relationship is sine theta equals m lambda over D okay then M here is the order of magnitude and we're supposed to look at the first order so there's the one oops made an important typo I said M lambda over D and then for some odd reason I wrote L it's supposed to be D which is the separation distance between the lines okay then in the problem it says that sine theta is supposed to be approximated as theta actually like this here like theta and what it also should say is that the angle is so small that the same thing happens with the tangent theta so what I can do here is I can set these two equal to each other I'm gonna change the color so R over L equals lambda over D the lambda here is either one of these two and the D is given in the problem um, actually that's what we're supposed to figure out the R is not given in the problem but the difference between 
the two wavelengths here will give us a delta R. I'm going to do that in just a moment. And that would be 3.00 centimeters. And the L is given as 81.0 centimeters in the prong. Okay, for the two wavelengths, what I would do is I would do this particular equation for each of them. So I would write lambda 1, lambda 2, R1, R2, and then take the difference between the two. So I'm going to do delta R over L equals delta lambda over D. And then I think I need a little bit more space. Okay, and then I'm supposed to solve for D. So that's going to be D equals delta lambda times capital L divided by delta R. And I'm going to come up with something. And that would be in, let's see, this one is going to be centimeters, centimeters. This is going to be nanometers, so that'll be in nanometers. Respectively, then I'm actually supposed to change that to centimeters. So I'll do the conversion on the calculator here. All right, so I have 656 minus 486 nanometers. Well, I can do it in my head, not 150. I can do it in my head, 170 nanometers is the difference, times the 81.0 centimeters divided by the 3.00 centimeters. Centimeters here divides out with centimeters here, and multiply by 170 nanometers still in nanometers, 4,590. And now I need to shift the decimal point. So from nanometers to meters would be 9, but centimeters is just 2 short of, of the meter. So it's actually um, a shift of 7. And of course, that's I have to shift that to the decimal point to the left-hand side. So again, from nanometers to centimeters, it's 7. And I come up with this one here, 4.59, 10 to negative 4 would be the answer right here, respectively. They want us to figure out actually the inverse, how many lines per centimeter. So I'm going to take the inverse of that, and I come up with 2,180 lines per centimeters is the answer. So this is actually what they want us to figure out, 1 over d equals this many lines per centimeter. And that's how yeah, tight the diffraction grating has to be in order to produce the red and the turquoise wavelengths colors at yeah, a difference of 3.00 centimeters from each other, about an inch from each other as we're looking through this here. And again, the apparatus here that I described in my lab sheet is about 81 centimeters long, so just short of three feet. But again, the answer here is the 2,180 lines per centimeter. This problem says, it is known that the possible values for the magnetic quantum number ML are negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, and plus 4. Determine the orbital quantum number and the smallest possible value of the principal quantum number. Right away, the answers are that the orbital quantum number is 4, and the smallest possible value of the principal quantum number is 5. So I already answered the question, actually, but let's look at it. These are the rules. The principal quantum number, which is the main energy level, is 1, and then 2, and so on, 3. And this could go on. As far as the electrons in a normal atom are concerned, they are trying to be squeezed as low as possible. And we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for the lowest energy possible, they're trying to be squeezed towards the bottom. Of course, I could jump to up upper shells as in a collision where they gain some energy and then they would have to jump down.
Okay, L is based on n minus 1. Up, oh, I wrote that incorrectly. I have to write it as 0, comma, and then until it gets to n minus 1. So what that means for n equals 3 is that the largest L is 2, and then we could have 1 and 0. If we have n equals 7, then L could be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. If n equals 1, then here we have 0, and well, there's nothing in between, so we only have the 0, and that's what we see reflected here. The L is 0 when the n equals 1, 1 and 0 for n equals 2, and so on. And for example, the L equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, that's off the chart here, for n equals 4. Okay, the magnetic quantum number it runs from negative L all the way through 0 to positive L. So, if, for example, here for n equals 3, the, this rule here is being applied that L has to, can be 2, 1, and 0, then for the L equals 2, uh, the m, the quant magnetic quantum number, would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And for the L equals 1, it would be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And for the L equals 0, it would only be m equals 0. And then, of course, the spin is either plus 1 half or minus 1 half. And if you look at all the combinations that are possible here, that's where you come up with the maximum number of electrons in a subshell. Let me just look at, yeah, for example, this one here. So n equals 3, and the largest L that is possible is 2. And for L equals 2, I would have negative 2, negative 1, negative 0, plus 1, and plus 2 for the m, which is 5 possibilities. And then each of those could have a spin plus 1 half or minus 1 half. So twice the 5 is going to be 10. And then for the L equals 1, I would have three possibilities for the magnetic quantum number negative 1, 0, and 1. So I come up with 6 because each one of those can have a spin 1 or plus 1 half or negative 1 half. And you can see that being repeated that for the L equals 1, it's always 6 possibilities. For the L equals 2, it's always 10 possibilities. If they had written here the L equals 3, we would come up with 14 possibilities. 14 electrons could go into that subshell. Okay, in any case, I already answered the question earlier. If, in this particular problem, m is given as negative 4 through 0 up to positive 4, then from that follows that L must be 4. and n must be 5 because n needs to be at least 1 higher than, than the L. And it says in the problem we're supposed to come up with the smallest possible value of the principal quantum number. So n equals 5 and L equals 4. Here's a little more on the exclusion principle. A little history for Wolfgang Pauli. He was born in 1900 and you can see this is from the American Physical Society article from a few years ago. And so he was born in 1900 and he received his doctorate in 1921 so he was apparently super smart and got his doctorate when he was 21. And his first lecture when he was hired at that time, probably not as a professor, but as yeah, kind of like an assistant professor. He gave his first lecture on the periodic ta table of the elements, which he found unsatisfactory because the atomic shell structure was not understood, and so on. And eventually he came up 
with the quantum numbers that could then explain why the periodic table looks the way it does and then he called it the exclusion principle as he noticed that no two electrons and later it turned out that no two fermions could be in the same state that they always have to have a different number of um, a different set of quantum numbers. The word fermion means any kind of particle that has a half spin. The web elements here that shows the um, periodic table and we can see here that we have two electrons I'm sorry two elements in the first group and a period and then we have eight and then we kind of would have 18 here in the next one but there is already an overlap in the let's see it's the D shell and the S shell between the third I'm, I'm sorry between the um, second and the third shell or, or the, the, the third and the fourth shell and so that's why we don't have 18 and then of course these here they go in here later so there is an energetic overlap here but he, uh, he was able to explain well that's why we have two s electrons and here we have two s and six p electrons and here we have two s and six p electrons and then we would have 10 d electrons but before they are being filled the next one here starts on the fourth level that's where I corrected myself a moment ago and with that one here this is on hyperphysics some applications not just the periodic table which is in here as well there it says so and I had mentioned this one here a moment ago fermions are the ones with half spin just such as the electron the neutron the proton and such as I mentioned as in a previous problem the white dwarf electron degeneracy there I use the white dwarf as an example for the uncertainty principle but it also goes with the exclusion principle that in a phase space of the Planck constant cubed with the difference with, with, with the inner uncertainty for the momentum and the uncertainty for the distance that there can only be two electrons in there due to the exclusion principle be two electrons because one half spin up and one half spin down and then there are some other examples here as well this problem reads when an electron makes a transition between energy levels of an atom there are no restrictions on the initial and final values of the principal quantum numbers and so that means an electron can jump down from the fifth to the fourth and then the second and then the first level or directly from the fifth to the first or from the fifth to the third then to the second then to the first so the electron can jump down and can cascade um, in any kind of way but for the angular momentum quantum numbers something else is stated and so the problem reads on according to quantum mechanics however there is a rule that restricts the initial and final values of the orbital quantum number L this rule is called a selection rule and states that delta L equals plus minus negative one and I pulled hyperphysics for this one here and it says again here are the restrictions on that delta L equals plus minus one and that says here another approach to the selection rules is to note that any electron transition which involves the emission of a photon must involve a change of one in the angular momentum the photon is said to have an intrinsic angular momentum or spin of one so that conservation of angular momentum and photon emission requires change of one in the atoms angular momentum so the photon itself is taking along an L of plus minus one I'm gonna take this delta away here but leave it up here so for, as far as the electron is concerned it has to change by one so either going up or down and for because the photon is going to either take on a plus one or a minus one
Okay. In other words, when an electron makes a transition between energy levels, the value of L can only increase or decrease by one. The value of L may not remain the same or increase or decrease by more than one, according to this rule, which of the following energy level transitions are allowed. And when it says allowed or permitted or not allowed, not permitted, that still means that in the experiment we would have to see, well, what's the outcome and sure enough yeah only those particular um, energy transitions are for, for the electron are actually happening where the delta L changes by where the L changes by plus or minus one okay so let me write down what they have here 2p to 1s and so that goes from here, the 2p is this one here, to 1s. Oh, oops. I kind of mess this up here a little bit, because this is not the very first one. This is actually a second one, b. And that one is possible, because l changes by 1. And of course, the principal quantum number is going down. So this one is permitted. And instead of me writing here this here while I'm recording, I think I'm just going to take a little time out here and just going to go ahead and type it in. Okay, there I'm back. So the first one here, that's the one I overlooked here for a moment, that's not permitted because even though it goes from the second level to the first level, but with in the S subshell, L equals zero, and here equal L equals zero again, so that does not fulfill the selection rule. The third one, 4P, 2P, for the same reason, no, because it goes from the P level, which is this one here, L equals one, to the P level, which is this one here, L equals one. And this one here, 4S to 2P, so 4S is this one here. 4 and 0 goes to 2p, which is 2 and 1, so it jumps down, and then 2 changes to 1, so which is covered by the selection rule, so that's a yes. And then this one here, 3d to 3s, so the 3d is this one here, l equals 2, and then here l equals 0 and that is not allowed, so this one is a no because the change would be 2.